How will open source and AI tools impact the future of cybersecurity and cybersecurity jobs? This is a topic we'll be discussing in today's video, where we'll be delving deeper into the open source tools used in cybersecurity, which by the way, there may be more than you think, the use and impact of AI on open source projects, and why this is relevant to all of us. First, let's go into how are open source and AI tools currently used in cybersecurity today. This may or may not surprise you, but many tools in cybersecurity are open source and free to use, including very popular tools like Metasploit, Nmap, Wireshark, OpenVAS, Snort, and many, many others. I would say cybersecurity is probably one of the sectors with some of the most widely available tooling, which also goes back to the core of the cybersecurity community as a whole. Since so much information is shared by and within the community, this is one of the big reasons why many tools in cybersecurity that are open source are also used by small and big companies alike. Many of these cybersecurity tools and apps that aren't open source may also have some equivalent of a community edition or a public version that you can use for free with just the meat and bones of the application for students, new learners, etc. And not to mention all the open source libraries and dependencies that many companies, developers, cybersecurity teams are also using on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, many open source tools are becoming more and more popular and gaining widespread adoption because firstly, they're free to use. Many of them also have large communities backing them up whether it's regular updates or patching. So essentially the open source community in cybersecurity is very active and continuing to grow. This along with the fact that AI is very quickly being adopted by companies, integrating AI bots or features into existing applications, or even using code that is generated by an AI coding tool in an open source application or third party library that may potentially have security vulnerabilities. This is probably one of the biggest risks that open source tools face. And this is also what we'll be delving deeper into today. Something else to be wary of is employees and organizations who may be using AI tools without measuring the privacy and security risks introduced. This is especially true for companies with employees who are currently using AI tools like ChatGPT that may potentially be sharing private or confidential information of their application data, their employees, their customers, and not really knowing exactly where that data is going and who will have access to that data in the future. This may also go against a company's existing agreements or SLAs with their customers and clients, depending on what kind of data that employees may be sharing with an AI tool or chatbot. Not to mention all the auditing and compliance requirements that may not have been followed by doing so. But as I alluded to before, essentially insecure code generated by AI and used in production level applications is probably one of the biggest risks of all, especially when it's on an open source tool or application that hundreds or potentially thousands of companies are currently using. I'm sure you've seen a lot of news articles about things like this happening where an open source tool gets a big vulnerability and all of a sudden companies are scrambling to fix this vulnerability as soon as possible due to some zero day vulnerability that is currently being exploited in the wild. This is even even more alarming when you think about the higher risk of using open source libraries or dependencies with malicious code or known vulnerabilities, especially for outdated versions and non-maintained libraries. For example, this could be an attack vector that attackers may target specifically for cybersecurity coding tools or libraries that may no longer be being maintained. I've talked about how AI tools like ChatGPT can help you write code faster, but there's still an open question on everyone's mind. Does coding with AI lead to cybersecurity risk? If you want to learn how you can leverage the power of AI to code faster while staying secure, join Sneak's upcoming live session on AI hallucinations and manipulation, how to use AI coding tools securely on September 13th, 2023. During this live session, the Sneak team will do a live experiment with ChatGPT to understand AI-generated security risk. They'll search for and exploit vulnerabilities like path traversal and cross-site scripting, revealing potential dangers in AI generated code. This is a great way to learn more about how vulnerabilities can be introduced into your code base if you're using AI and how to detect and mitigate it quickly. But it's not all doom and gloom. You'll also get actionable advice on how you can continue using AI coding tools like ChatGPT and Copilot securely. So join the session on how to use AI coding tools securely on September 13th at 11 a.m. EDT. It's free, virtual, and you can register for the session using the link sneak.com co slash AI Sandra. Thank you to Sneak for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. So now that we've discussed some of the common risks on using open source tooling, especially in the age of AI, what are some ways that you can securely use AI tools while protecting your personal and company's data, customer data, 
applications, etc. First things first, I think the number one option is firstly, if your company already has some kind of AI tooling that they're using internally, this is especially important if you're using the tool to do day to day work, because that also typically will mean that you're sharing some kind of internal or confidential data that you probably wouldn't want to share to a public facing AI chatbot. Your organization may also have some guidelines on what kinds of AI tooling is permitted to be used on the job in your role, if any, and I would definitely look for that outline or policy somewhere before considering using an external AI tool. Another option is to scrub or anonymize any of the data that you're using so that it doesn't contain any sensitive information, whether it be customer names, private information, or anything else that you probably wouldn't want to share externally. You may also review the privacy policies of the AI tool that you're using so that you know who's using your data, how they're using it, and when. And knowing all of this is just as important as AI tools and chatbots become more and more popular in all the applications that we use. If you have third-party vendors or applications that you personally use or your company uses, they should be providing you some kind of list of sub-processors if they're going to be using your data, and that may also share information about the AI tool that a vendor may be using, which is always good information to keep track of. Because many AI tools now are still in beta or testing, that typically provides a lot of room for improvement as well as areas of feedback. And because I don't think AI tools are going anywhere anytime soon, barring any big regulations that may come our way in the future, many of these tools are definitely here to stay. And I really do think that it can help you become much more efficient at your role by taking the time off of your plate to do the repetitive and boring tasks. If you're going to be regularly using AI tooling, then I would always consider providing your feedback, providing your input, any feature requests or bug fixes that you may find. Because at the end of the day, cybersecurity is part of everyone's role and taking that responsibility upon yourself to share the feedback or any bugs that you find will be just as important when keeping your information secure. This plus the fact that you should only be using AI tools that you generally trust that are using a reputable model and you know how and where your data is being used. And now moving on to how to securely use open source tools in the age of AI. This I think is an especially interesting one because there are so many different types and variations of open source tooling, libraries, dependencies out there. But of course, similar to AI tools, you always want to make sure that you're using a library or dependency that is regularly updated and well maintained by a strong community so that there are lower chances of a security vulnerabilities or risk I'm not saying that it's 100 percent foolproof but i do think that having a strong community behind an open source tool will significantly lower the chances of that tool having an exploitable vulnerability that wasn't caught by the community reviewing any updates or patches you also want to of course make sure that you're always on the latest version even though I know sometimes this can be a little bit difficult depending on the project you're working on, your company, your team. They may be deprecated features that you may be using on an older version or maybe the grunt work just to update to a newer version may break certain things. There are lots of different reasons as to why companies tend to stick to an older version of a library or dependency, but keeping your open source tools and dependencies up to date is probably one of the biggest ways to keep your applications secure, whether it's your personal applications or your company's applications, you always want to try to make sure that you're on the latest versions of your dependencies so that you're not introducing security risks and vulnerabilities by using a deprecated version, especially if there is a known exploitable vulnerability. You should also be regularly kept up to date with any cybersecurity news or announcements that apply to that open source tooling or application so that you know when you're impacted by a zero day or an exploitable vulnerability. By keeping up with cybersecurity news sources like security advisories, cybersecurity news outlets, etc. And now finally, what does the future of using AI tools and what are the impacts on privacy and shared data? As I've mentioned earlier in the video, I don't think that AI tooling or open source tooling is going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, I think this is an area that the industry is leaning more towards, and this will really impact the growth of the cybersecurity field as a whole in the next 10 to 20 years. In fact, think about all the time that a cybersecurity or an SOC analyst could save if they're able to pass down the nitty gritty parts of their tasks that may be repetitive, that may be boring, that may be prone to human error to an AI bot for a vulnerability management tool or an SIEM before you even make a query to look for this specific spike or look for a specific anomaly. If the tool could spot out anomalies by itself and report it to whoever is on call 
whether it be the security team or the SRE team or the developer team. This will save so much time and effort on the human side of things so that you're able to focus instead on doing other things, other parts of your job even better, parts that may require human creativity, that may require you to make some important decisions, and anything else that is part of your job that only you can do. One of the areas I think is really going to grow as part of this age of AI is around data privacy. With more and more companies going through security and privacy audit, getting certifications, this is going to be a very, very big area of cybersecurity that I think is going to need a lot of discussion internally and externally for companies, especially in finance, in government, in healthcare, in any company that has private information from their customers with agreements on how they can use that data. For example, if a company is planning on creating an AI tool, what do their agreements look like with their customers on whether or not they're able to use their customers' data to potentially train their AI model? And what does that consent look like from an organization point of view, from their auditing point of view, even from the employees of that company's point of view? And what kinds of updates will be needed to their privacy policies and the consent requests and notifications that all need to be part of that process. So with the rapid growth of AI open source tooling and all the advances in technology that it will bring to tech and cybersecurity roles as a whole, I do think that privacy is going to be an even bigger area of growth when it comes down to the regulatory and compliance side of things. Which also means if you're someone who is interested in that governance, risk, and compliance area of cybersecurity, I think this is going to be one of the big areas of growth in the next five to 10 years. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to sign up for the free session on how to use AI coding tools securely on September 13th at 11 a.m. EDT. This session is completely free to join, virtual, and you can register using the link in my description, sneak.co slash AI Sandra. I myself am also really interested in this specific topic, so I'll also be joining and hopefully see you guys there as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m., and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!